everybody! Welcome, welcome to another live cooking show on Tuesdays. Make sure everything is on and working. So, whew. Oh, it's Tuesday. It's time for live cooking. Today I'm super excited because I'm making my broccoli cheddar soup. Okay, now this is my first question for you guys. Um, I have always called it cheddar broccoli soup. But when I went and I did all, you know, the like search through the internet and see what people are really calling it and make sure that I name it the right thing, apparently everybody else in the world calls it broccoli cheddar soup or broccoli and cheese soup, which makes sense because cheese and broccoli doesn't have the same sound. But I don't know. I was always cheddar broccoli soup. So apparently I'm super strange and I'm messing up my words. So I would love to know if I'm the only one who does that or if you guys also have called it cheddar broccoli or broccoli cheddar, if it's an interchangeable thing for you. So. Um, welcome, welcome. There we go. I can see comments now. Okay. It always takes a couple seconds to get everything like working smoothly. So today is a little bit of an experiment. I have made this cherry broccoli soup pretty much my whole life. Um, and I got this, I, so blah, back up. Originally I got a recipe from my mom for clam chowder. And we always made it a certain way. And then as I got older, and I've been making it since I was a child, and as I got older, I'm like, I could use this same technique of cooking the vegetables in uh, broth or water and then adding a nice thick cream sauce uh, with pretty much anything. I can add, you know, broccoli and cheese, <laughs> cheddar and broccoli soup. Um, I used this same technique for my one pot loaded baked potato soup and quite a few other soups that I just fell in love with. Anyway, when I made my one, when I made the loaded baked potato soup, I'm like, there's gotta be a way to make this one pot. And so I did that and it's been a really popular recipe on my site. So when I decided to go live today with my uh, broccoli cheddar soup, I thought, I wonder if there's a way we can do the same thing and cook it all in one pot. So I haven't done this before. <laughs> I guess I probably should have done a test run, but my life is a little busy and a little crazy and it didn't happen. And so we're going to do our test run today live uh, because I've made it before with the loaded baked potato soup. I'm pretty sure it's going to work out just fine, but um, we'll see. We're going to experiment together and it's going to be so much fun. So typically for this soup, I take my, um, my onions and my garlic and I saute them along with the potatoes uh, and I, uh, and then I add, uh, all the water and the broth and all the other vegetables, carrots and all that stuff, and boil it until the potatoes are cooked. Then once the potatoes are cooked, I add the broccoli to it, cook it a little bit, because broccoli doesn't take as long to cook. Um, and then I, on the side, in a second pot, I make my cream thickener. So what we're gonna do as a one pot instead, is we're gonna cook our veggies, we're going to add the flour and create the roux right inside the pot with the vegetables. And then we're gonna add all of our liquids, the creams and the half and halves and the milks that we usually add as part of the thickener. We're gonna add it right to this pot along with the broth, along with the veggies that we're gonna boil. Boil everything and then add all the cheddar and salts and flavors and give it a try. So that's the expectation for today. So for those of you joining us, today we're making one pot cheddar broccoli soup. Let's give it a go. I'm gonna turn my uh, thing on and switch out the cameras. Let's get started. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is take the butter and get that starting to melt. So now typically, uh, I've always in the past just done onions, but uh, when I was comparing it to my one pot loaded baked potato soup, I you know saw the word garlic and I just couldn't help myself because let's face it, garlic makes everything better, in my opinion. You gotta get all the garlic, because let's face it, this stuff is good. All right. And then we're going to melt this together and saute it until the onions are translucent and the butter is all melted. So I would love to hear, around here, it actually snowed last week. That is how cold it still is around here. I am going between, I saw one of those memes the other day that talked about uh, spring in Utah, uh, and it said it's the only place where you have the heater and the air conditioner on in the same day, and I legit did it last week. It was so cold in the morning, I had the heater on, and then by the afternoon, evening, it was so hot, it doesn't help that I baked like three cakes that day, so my oven was on all day. It was so hot that I ended up turning on the air conditioner. <laughs> Just, just a smidge, just a little bit, but it still counts. Uh, so I would love to hear what's the weather like where you're at. I am ready for spring, but I'm not ready for the heat this summer brings around here. So, blah. Um, 
hello from Tennessee. Hey, Boise, Idaho, not too far. Uh, Mississippi, I've always loved saying that. Mississippi, it's a fun word. June, hello, it's nice to see you. Hi, Becky, Noel, Margaret, Veronica, Sherry. Um, let's see over here. Uh, you say it alphabetically, broccoli cheese soup. It makes sense. Uh, hello, can you say hi to me? Uh, Evelina, of course I can. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so uh, my other, I, so I can't just cook this on the stove because the whole camera setup just doesn't work that way. So I have a little uh, cooktop that I bring over to the counters and I have two. This one's my old one, but it's nice and quiet. And my newer one, my fancy schmancy, really pretty one, is so loud that it was causing some problems in some of the videos. So this one is not as fast of heating things up, so it's gonna take us a little bit longer. So I'm actually going to do something I typically don't do and add the lid at this stage just to help hold the heat in. Something I do not normally do. And I forgot to plug in this mic. So we're gonna do that now. I can figure out how to get that together. Okay, hello from Connecticut, Texas. I am going to Texas next week. I'm so excited. I haven't been in a while. I'm going to Austin for a conference. Margaret, hello. Hello from Ohio. You love my videos. Thank you so much, Debbie. Velma, hello from Pennsylvania. Ooh, Australia. Robin, welcome, welcome. You are watching from very far away. This is so much fun. A part of the reason that I enjoy doing this is one, I enjoy teaching recipes and I enjoy teaching cooking and helping people out and answering questions. But the other part of it is, it's just really fun to connect with people from all over the world. Now I'm old enough now. <laughs> I'm one of those people who kind of crosses both lines. I grew up without personal computers, but I had one in my teenage years. So, but we didn't have Facebook yet. So I didn't do anything stupid and embarrassing for the whole world to see. Um, so I kind of have seen it from every point of view and this is just crazy to me that that people can be here from all over the world and we can be talking about our shared love of everything cheesy. <laughs> Did you know National Cheese Day is June 4th? One of my favorite days because let's face it, could there be a better day than National Cheese Day? So I just read a post on my blog where I shared 29 cheesy, savory cheesy recipes. And I was working on that this morning and I was like drooling as I'm trying to finish the post and add all the good cheesiness recipes. It's crazy to me. You have a big snowstorm in Michigan on Sunday. Okay, so somebody told me that making this cheddar broccoli soup during this time of year, that it was too late, that people weren't still making comfort food. But I said... I had snow this week. Clearly Michigan is having snow this week. There are plenty of places where they still eat comfort food. Plus, to be fair, I cook soup year round, even in the summer, even in 105 degrees. That's what air conditioning is for, right? So I can still eat the food that I love, even when it's hot outside. So I would love to hear what you guys do. Do you uh, cook seasonally or do you cook your favorite foods year round, no matter what the weather is? So I'm all about the comfort food. Um, oh, there we go. We got some steam going now. I love comfort food, all the comfort food, all the time. All right, so now we're starting to get some melting going on here. That was a good choice, I'm trying to get some sauteing going. So in my loaded baked potato soup, I actually start the recipe by cooking bacon right in the pot, and then I leave uh, the bacon grease in there and add the butter to it, because let's face it, you can never have enough bacon anything. Uh, but for this one, we're just starting out with butter. But if for some reason you keep your bacon drippings, which who doesn't, but if you have some extra bacon drippings lying around, you can add that here and use this uh, along with the butter, if that's something that you really like, because I think the flavor of bacon really goes well in uh, broccoli cheddar soup. All right, so butter is almost completely melted. And then we can move on. And those onions are getting nice and translucent, which is what we are going for here. So let's see this. Get a better view maybe over here at these nice translucent onions. Yum, so good. All right, so next up, we are going to add the flour and stir that in. And we wanna cook the flour taste out and get a nice roux going and that is gonna be our thickener for our soup. And it's just gonna stick right to the butter and the onions and the garlic. And we wanna cook this long enough that it goes just a little bit tan. So when it comes to roux, the, um, 
the longer you cook it, the darker the color and the better like the great nutty depth of flavor, but the less thickening it actually is good for. Where the less you cook it, the less flavor, the less nuttiness, the less color, but also the better the thickener. So for, for this soup, I'm just going for like a light tan, not like a brick red the way that you would with like some Creole or Cajun dishes. And what you don't want to do is just add the flour, stir it, and then add your liquids right away because then you would have a floury um, taste at the end of the day. We'd need to have that flavor cook out. And while this is cooking, I'm actually going to add some of the salt and some of the pepper right now too. So let's do... Um, let's do like two teaspoons of salt and... Oh, that is not salt. I almost put baking soda in there. That would have been a problem. All right, so like two teaspoons of salt and let's say half a teaspoon of pepper. Uh, this is just to start with. Once the soup is cooked, I'll actually add more salt and pepper to, uh, to taste. But we want to get a little bit of that flavor in there now. And you want to keep stirring because we don't want this to like burn to the bottom. Getting a nice paste. At first it's really, really thick and really, really pasty, but as it cooks, it loosens up a little bit. So it's not, um, so, yeah, so it's not so pasty. <laughs> I was trying to think of another way to say that, but I could not. Hello from North Carolina. Hi, so see, is this recipe printable? You haven't checked your emails from me. Yes, this is on my site. Although the way it's on my site, Brenda, is the two pot version. So after, uh, after this, I will go and update it on my site to the one pot version. I just didn't want to update it until after this went live. So anybody who's seen the recipe in the past would be super confused by that. Uh, you use the name interchangeably. Broccoli, cheddar, cheddar, broccoli. Awesome. The weather has been awesome here. Nice in Canada. Early teens. Oh man, that still sounds really cold. You make suits year long, comfort food all the time. Oh, Crystal, I'm so glad that I am not the only one. Angela, you make comfort your food year round too. Yes, you save your bacon drippings for your coffee, keep it in the fridge. Yes, you could, this would be, bacon drippings would be awesome in this. In fact, I just recently used mine up, so I don't have any more, but I kind of wish that I still did. All right, so now we're gonna add some of our liquids. I'm gonna start by adding the broth. Now you can do water too. And you can see that my broth's kind of separated. It's because I use um, Better Than Bouillon to make my broths. I really, really love that stuff. It just stays in your fridge. They have a ton of different flavors. It's organic. It's awesome. Uh, Margaret, year round. <laughs> you grill year round. Dang. Rain, snow, shine. That's awesome. Uh, once spring hits, you cook everything on the grill. That sounds really nice. So I got a smoker last year, but I'm still new to it. So I don't cook everything on it. Susie, so you're serving the soup this week. Awesome. Joyce also makes it year round. Sherry grills year round too. Man, you guys are year round enthusiasts. I love it. All right, now we're gonna add, now that I kind of broke up that a little bit, we're gonna add the half and half as well. What we wanna do is we're gonna, we wanna bring this up to a boil eventually. So I'm just going to turn the heat up a little bit right now to like medium high. And now I'm going to add the milk. So I'm not going to add all the milk. I'm going to keep some aside in case I need it later if it gets too thick. And if it doesn't get too thick, I'll be glad that I kept some aside. So I'm adding about two cups right now and we'll see if we need the rest. And I'm actually going to get my whisk in here to just kind of help break up that roux thickener that we started with real fast, then I'll go back to the wooden spoon. All right, so who else loves cooking with cast iron? I was actually scared of it most of my life um, because my mom didn't cook with cast iron, so I hadn't really used it. And then as an adult, you hear all these like scary stories about taking care of it and cleaning it, but I'm glad I finally sucked it up and got into it because I love it. I love the depth of flavor, and I love that I can use metal utensils. <laughs> <laughs> probably part, probably my favorite part. All right, so that is nice and broken up now. All right, so we are bringing this up to heat. So I'm actually gonna put the lid on it just to help us heat it up really fast. 
and now is a good time to answer some questions. So I actually really like to serve this soup in bread bowls, but um, I went to a couple grocery stores yesterday and I didn't find any bread bowls. They must just be out of stock right now, which makes me sad. And I thought, oh, well I could make some bread bowls. And then my daughter came home last night and said, mom, it's my birthday tomorrow. Today is her birthday. Um, are you bringing treats to school? And I was like, you're in sixth grade. I didn't think that was a thing anymore, but apparently it is. So my day kind of got taken over by treats for school, for birthdays, and um, so no bread bowls. But uh, but that is how I usually serve this. It's also really good with cornbread. Um, and of course, if I could make a bowl out of cheese, I would. I should get like a little like wheel of cheese and carve it out and use that for my soup bowl. Like, that sounds amazing because it would like melt as the warm soup was in there. Oh, I just love cheese. Cheese is so good. Um, it looks delicious. Thank you. Does the soup freeze well? Uh, Tanya, it does not. Because of all the dairy that is in the soup, I don't recommend, I don't recommend freezing any soups that are dairy based, only soups that are like liquid based because dairy based soups, uh, the, the dairy, I mean, you can freeze it cause like you can freeze milk, but it's just never the same after, if that makes sense. Like it's just always a little broken. Uh, and it just doesn't come back together. So the texture of the soup, in my opinion, is not great after freezing it. Uh, if I was going to, want, if I wanted to make a big batch of this soup and freeze it, what I would do is I would stick with the two pot method, not the one pot method, and I would cook a big lot of the vegetables and the broth and then freeze those. And then when I heated it, then make uh, really quickly whip up a batch of the thickener, the uh, butter, flour, roux and then add the half and half uh, and create a thickener and then add that to it. But honestly, that just sounds like a lot more work than just making it fresh. So this is not one of those soups that I've ever used for a freezer meal. I have had people tell me that they've frozen it, um, but I'm all about consistency and texture. And so I've never been a fan, personal preference. All right, so now we're going to add our veggies. Um, so you can, of course, just add broccoli, but I like to add a little bit of color. So I add some carrots in there and I like to grate mine so that they uh, cook really easily and really fast. And also so there's not like big, huge chunks because overall I want this soup to be creamier other than like the broccoli, right? And then I also like to add potatoes. Now I just grated these potatoes fresh. Um, you can, I, you could probably use frozen hash browns. I've never tried, but again, kind of the same thing. This is going to break up in the soup and help it be thicker and delicious and give us all the goodness that comes from those potatoes and still leave all that broccoli there. Uh, but I love the potatoes as part of the flavor and part of the soup. But again, personal preference. Okay, let's get that stirred in. Trying to bring this up to a nice simmer. And I always make a huge, huge pot. So I'm about to add the broccoli and this thing is gonna come right up to the top. All right, so I um, I always do like five broccoli heads, and but you can use as much or as little broccoli as you like if you're a more broccoli person or a less broccoli person, as long as it fits in your pot, that's all that really matters and you're good. All right. And I like to break up my broccoli really small. Uh, this is like the biggest piece that I'll do simply because um, the next day after the soup is made, it will be like the broccoli breaks up more as you reheat it. And I love that, but I want that on the first day. So I just cut out my broccoli a little bit smaller. Um, and it also makes it easier for my kids to eat because if it's all too, if there's too big a chunks and you have to like, like soup is not, you don't have to, you shouldn't have to use a knife for soup. That's what I'm trying to say. So I like everything able to fit on a spoon as the perfect bite. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite movies is um, with Barbara Streisand. Uh, oh, is it Mirror House Two Faces? When she talks about every bite should be the perfect bite and get the right amount of ratio of all the ingredients. I love that. Spoke to my soul. Perfect bite. It's totally me. Oh, come on, there we go. All right, so we're just adding all this. Now, because the potatoes are so small and the carrots are so small, we can actually add these all together. If the potatoes were bigger chunks, uh, then you would want to cook them first and longer. 
because, whoa, nice little mound of broccoli there. Let's get all those little chunks. Um, because the potatoes would need to cook longer, but because they're so small, they don't need to cook that long. So they'll take about the same amount of time as it takes to cook the broccoli. So that's why I'm putting them all in together. And it looks like, I'm going to tell you it never, every time I add the broccoli to this soup, I always feel like, oh no, I don't have enough liquid, but just give it a chance, stir it up. Uh, it'll be okay. <laughs> I promise. Just stir it carefully so you don't spill anything. But yeah, it never feels like enough liquid and then it's always okay in the end. Oh, my, computer. my computer's trying to update on me. You love bread balls. I do too, Crystal. There's just something about it. I mean, being able to eat your bowl, so good and so worth it. Fried potatoes and eggs are best in cast iron. You use your cast iron every day. I have so much cast iron now. I didn't used to have any at all. And I have this awesome collection and it's so heavy. I don't really know what to do with it. I would love to put it on display somewhere. All right, so again, just stir carefully because we're just trying to get that broccoli under the liquid. We are not trying to um, make a mess. That's the goal, to not make a mess. Okay, and all these veggies get down and the liquid comes up. And you can see the liquid's actually, maybe you can see, the liquid's actually just right there. And as the veggies cook, it will all incorporate better. These potatoes are gonna break down a little bit. The broccoli's gonna break down a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to put the lid back on again to get this, bring this up to a boil faster. Okay. Um, it looks so good. Oh, right, broccoli, so good. Uh, good job. Yum. Looks delicious. Uh, bread bowls are, bread bowls are seasonal. Ugh, that's terrible. Bread bowls should be year round. Um, that's the worst news I've heard all day. Uh, you love cast iron, but you only have frying pans. You'd love to get a full set of pots, pans, and baking dishes. So I have a nine by 13 cast iron. I will admit that's the one thing that I'm not like super in love with. I'm a little picky about my baking dishes. Um, and then I have like f flat pans from 14 inches all the way down to two inches. And then I have a square one and a grilling one. And then I have a grill set that goes on top of my cooktop. And yeah, love cast iron. I think I have 12, I have 14, 12, 12, 10, eight, six, four, two. <laughs> are the size of my cast iron pans. It is crazy. Ah, uh, soup your shell. Yeah. Okay. I am all cut up that way. So I'd love to hear from you. You know what? I'm going to, I think I'm going to add a little bit more of that milk in, even though I said I was going to save it to see if it got thicker. I just, there we go. Just a little bit more because I wanted to add the full two cups and I think I'm a little short still. Should have just put two cups in one cup separately. There we go. Okay. So the big question, I guess, for this soup is how much cheese do you like in your soup? Um, because I have on the recipe, you can put anywhere from two to four cups into cheddar broccoli soup because some people like less cheese, crazy, and some people like more cheese. <laughs> so we're going to put in the full four cups and I'll probably go, oh, Man, I wish I had more cheese <laughs> grated. Uh, so I like to grate my veggies, as I told you. And I have this awesome grater that just goes onto my mixer, onto my Bosch. And I was gonna show you guys how to do it, but I wanted everything prepped so it'd be faster. But basically how this works is this attaches where the mixing bowl usually goes. And then it has all these discs of different sizes and they put that on there and then put this on here. And then it's just like a food processor shredder and it just grates everything. This is the only grater I have. When my assistant first came to work for me, um, she was like looking for like a hand grater. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I grate way too much cheese and everything else to use a little hand grater. Like that would take forever. I do like my cheese two pounds at a time. Because if a recipe doesn't have two pounds of cheese, what's the point, right? So I also used that first, I grated the potatoes, pulled them out, grated the carrots, pulled them out, 
And usually if I'm just making it at home, I'll just grate them together. But when I'm trying to make it look pretty for video, I grate them separately. Um, oh good, we're starting to get some simmering going on. Can you see that right over here? And it's starting to smell so good. I'm just gonna go back in here and make, give this another stir. Make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. So good. And you can see that the vegetables are going down and the liquid is coming up, just like I said it would. You wanna be careful not to add too much liquid because then if you do, at the end when the soup is all done, it'll be too watery. And you don't want that, right? Oops, I was not paying attention, I spilled a little. You don't want watery cheddar broccoli soup. You want nice, thick, creamy cheddar broccoli soup. So, just keep it stirring. Oh, it's so full. <laughs> I probably should have gotten out my big pot, but it's hard to see video inside really big deep pots. It just gets so dark. Okay. I'm gonna get my metal spoon out. I feel like maybe, ooh, that noise. Oh, I hate that noise. But I felt like something was sticking just a little bit in this one spot, so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't. Oh, that's like the chalkboard and fingernail noise, right? Oh worst. That's the negative about cast iron is if something starts to stick and you don't catch it, you have to use metal and there's noise going on. Ooh. Okay, but look at this gorgeous color of this broccoli, that bright green as it sting, as it steams, <laughs> as it boils, as it cooks. So good. Oh. So do you guys, uh, so I'm a purist. I am an onion veggie, broccoli, and cheese gal. But I was looking at other recipes online the other day to see how other people did a one pot version. And I noticed a lot of people were adding a lot more spices to their cheddar broccoli soup. Um, and so I thought about doing that, but I just love this so much as is that I didn't want to change it up too much. Uh, in my making it a one pot soup. So I would love to hear from you guys if you like uh, your cheddar broccoli soup with like extra spices. And if so, what spices do you like to use? There was a crazy like variety of spices that I found online that people were making with this soup. It was like, wow, that's interesting and unusual and I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, you love my channel, I'm glad you're live today. Thank you so much, Eve, I appreciate that. Same, lots of cheese. Uh, which it's, you think it's weird to say broccoli cheddar because it's cheese broccoli, right? I always say cheddar broccoli too. Apparently I'm lame. Um, have I made tiramisu? I actually don't like coffee, like at all. Um, I can't even walk down the aisle at the grocery store that has coffee because the smell of it, very unpleasant for me. I do not enjoy it. So I made tiramisu a couple weeks ago for a client video and it was a struggle. So for myself, no. I have never made tiramisu for myself, nor do I have any plans on making tiramisu for myself um, in any way, shape, or form. All right, this is cooking really fast because broccoli cooks fast and the potatoes cook fast. Um, and I am gonna add that extra liquid now, not because it's thick, just because I wanna add a little bit more liquid so that the cheese has something to melt in and we are getting close to being done. I don't wanna add cold milk at the end. So I did end up using the eight cups of liquid, two cups of broth, three cups of half and half, um, and, uh, and three cups of milk. Same as I used for the one pot loaded with potato soup. Oh, come on, boil baby. Let's take a look at this now so you guys can see what it looks like. If my cameras will change or not. There we go, oh my word. So you can see I just added another cup of liquid to this just because I didn't feel like I had enough liquid to add the cheese to. So but I'm gonna let it uh, simmer away a little bit now. I'm gonna put the lid back on just to keep that heat in and it shouldn't take too much longer. The nice thing about uh, grating the potatoes uh, and using broccoli is that both of those vegetables cook much, much, much faster. And so this actually is a very quick soup to make, which I really like because often um, like the kids get home, we work on homework, we have a little fun, we play on the sling. And then I'm like, ah, it's dinner. <laughs> I haven't started anything. Um, it's crazy because I cook 
all day long while they're at school filming videos and uh, and I just you know like a break as much as I love cooking I like a break and then all of a sudden it's six and it's dinner so I love putting together really fast but still from scratch delicious meals for my family during the week um, you like to add cumin that's a really nice spice uh, easy cheese you, you like to taste everything not just the cheese the cheesier the better a lot of cheese easy cheese carry do you carry so do you mean that you add that like spray cheese to this soup i would not have done that uh you thought you were the only one who couldn't smell the stand of coffee <laughs> nope i i'm nope not a fan in any way shape or form oh my mom is calling me mom i'm live sometimes she'll watch my lives later and she'll be like why aren't you responding to me and i'm like because that was filmed two weeks ago <laughs> and then clearly right now she's calling me and i'm like Mom, I'm live. Gotta love moms. Uh, you like coffee with flavored creamer and coffee ice cream, but you don't like tiramisu. That's interesting, Stacey. I would not have known that. So the client who I was making this for puts um, a lot of vodka into hers as well. And I don't know if that's normal or not, but wow, it was it was a strong dessert by the end. My assistant took that home with her. Uh, you use a little bit of paprika and celery. You kind of keep it simple. Crystal, that actually sounds really good. I do have some celery seed that I like to use. Um, uh, in my soups as well. You wish they made lids for the square uh, cast pans. I agree. I would love a lid for my square pan because I like to cook my uh, burgers on the, I have the square one with the grill marks. I like to cut some burgers on there because I, I'm just new to being a smoker owner and so I have used that in the past um, and I wish it had a lid. Oh, look at this simmering away now. Oh, come on, cameras change. This is what we want to see. These bubbles are going to help everything thicken. They're going to finish cooking off those vegetables. Everything is almost done. I'm going to pull a fork out and we're going to test the broccoli because uh, as soon as the broccoli is done, then we're going to add the soup and our soup. <laughs> then we're going to add the cheese uh, and the soup will be done. That's all that we're really waiting for with this soup is that broccoli to cook. So I'm just going to keep stirring it every couple of minutes occasionally just to keep things from burning because it is a cream based soup and we don't want burning along the bottom. So just keep making sure that you scrape the bottom. I like these wooden spoons with a flat bottom for that reason so I can just get a nice scrape going on. And again, if you, I would use a bigger pot than this. <laughs> this is, this is making it more difficult than it needs to be to have the pot so full. It looks great in videos and in pictures. Um, but in the reality of life is use a big pot. <laughs> just, just do it. I'm taking Nike slogan for cooking. Just do it. Just use a big pot. Oh man, this smells amazing. So they're always coming up with these amazing upgrades when it comes to uh, video and technology. And I'm just waiting one of these days, Wonka vision, smell a vision, right? We're going to be able to do that. I used, I'm a, I'm a nerd at heart. I'm gonna test this broccoli. I'm a nerd at heart. And so I grew up watching like Star Wars and Star Trek. Okay, just a little bit longer. That's still not quite where we want the broccoli to break, at least where I want the broccoli to break. Um, anyway, I'm a total nerd. So I grew up watching um, Star Wars and Star Trek. And the funny thing is my parents are not, like they did not watch any of that stuff, uh, but I did, I loved it. And um, man, that idea of just being able to bloop, bloop, bloop and get like amazing food. <sighs> Some days that sounds really good, but most days I really enjoy cooking uh, and I would miss it. I would just go bloop, bloop, bloop to get all the ingredients that I needed in space, but I would still cook for myself. There's just something about that. It's about how you put the ingredients together and just taking the time to savor the idea of what you're going to eat because you get to smell it while you're cooking it. And I don't know. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want that to be gone. Like, I wouldn't mind if I could just like boop, boop, boop and have a cookie right when I wanted one, according to my recipe, but I, I do. I love cooking. Does anybody else out there just really love cooking? Like I would, there's a reason I cook every day. It's just fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy creating and I enjoy eating probably even more than I enjoy creating. Oh, this is looking so good. And remember how I said, that the liquid would come up. I did end up adding that final cup of liquid that I wasn't sure if I would use or not, but look, it's plenty of liquid. It's more than you think once you really get these liquids to cook down. But again, like I said, if you are more, if you're more of, um, 
if you like the soup portion better than the broccoli, like I like, again, broccoli in every bite. I want some onion and potatoes in every bite. I want a little bit of everything in every bite. But if you prefer to have yours more soupy, just leave out some of the broccoli and potatoes. Not a big deal, not hard. You'll end up, it'll still thicken, it'll still become creamy, it'll still be delicious, it'll just be more soupy. So again, it's just a personal preference, um, however you like to do it. I'm gonna put the lid back on just to help that broccoli cook a little bit faster. Oh, man, now that we started talking about soup bowls, I'm really upset that I don't have one. Uh, Eve, yes, you enjoy cooking too. Lorraine, you love to bake. Uh, Crystal, you love putting the love into your cooking. So yes, you love to cook. Uh, that's a thick soup. Yes, I like my soups on the thicker side, but remember we're also gonna add four cups of cheddar cheese in just a minute. Uh, you're watching with your son, Tanner. Hi, Tanner and Trucker. It's nice to see you. Um, you're hungry. Me too. I cook all day, but I don't stop and eat until I'm like all done. And so I'm always starving by the end of the day. Um, can you have some please? Of course. Only takes, what, 45 minutes to cook? <laughs> uh, have I made bread pudding with caramel rum sauce? You've made it, but the problem, hold on, let's see more, was the sauce, well, sauce was in a thick consistency and it had two little rums, so it was kind of bitter, but all in all, it was good. You know, I, I'm a texture girl. Actually, I've mentioned that a couple times on today's video, it's come up. Um, so for me, soggy bread is really unappealing. I have, I keep trying it, because everybody loves it so much, I have had probably one bread pudding in my life that I was like, okay, that's good. But most of them have just been, the texture has been wrong for me. Um, but I would say uh, if the sauce wasn't a thick enough consistency, it probably just didn't get cooked long enough before you add that final cream at the end when it's the butter and the sugar together. We'll just cook it to a little bit higher temperature. will help it be a little bit thicker once you do add the cream or Keep cooking it to the temperature you're cooking at, but add less cream at the end, and that'll help your caramel sauce be thicker. Um, and then as for the rum consistency, alcohol actually changes things quite a bit. I would consider using maybe rum extract to get a stronger rum flavor versus adding more alcohol, because alcohol will, will really react to, um, to everything that you're putting in that caramel sauce. Whew, it's gonna be a little bit warm. Hot lid, woo! Um, anyway, so that would, that would be my suggestion for why that wouldn't be thick and how to get a stronger flavor. So I hope that helps. Um, you use cauliflower instead of potatoes for thickening. Yeah, you can totally do that. Um, never really thought about it. I'm a potato gal, but I, like I said, I based this recipe off of my clam chowder and then my one, my one pot loaded baked potato soup is also based off of my clam chowder recipe. And so they both have potatoes in it. And so I just kind of went from there. Um, you love to cook. You're learning to cook carb free. Oh. Good for you, but that makes me sad. Breaks my heart a little bit. Um, all these like keto and low carb. One of my friends the other day, I said, hey, let's go out for sushi. And she said, I can't, I'm keto. I'm like, it's oh, the worst thing I've ever heard. Worst thing I've ever heard. I could not live without carbs and rice. I mean, I'm sure I could, obviously, but I wouldn't enjoy it as much. I uh, love to cook, but you love baking even more. I really love both. I go through phases where sometimes I like the baking side better and sometimes, let's check out the soup. Sometimes I, um, sometimes I like the baking side better and sometimes I like, look how beautiful this is looking. Let's test this broccoli again. Sometimes I like the baking more better and sometimes I like the, uh, the cooking side better. Honestly, I'm a pretty good mix though because as much as I love eating uh, cakes and brownies and cookies and ice creams and desserts, I also just really love, let's get a bigger piece. I really love, ooh, um, just really good savory dishes. I'm trying to find a, a broccoli piece that has a nice, a thicker base for me to stick my fork in. There we go, okay. Almost, it's so close. You could serve it right now. I just prefer it to be, the broccoli to be a little bit, a little bit more cooked. Personal preference. So again, stop whenever you are happy with the broccoli. That is all that this is about. Um, yum, K, okay. yes, I agree. Yum, so good. Will you show me the cast iron on your stove, please? Um, I'm still not allowed to carry super heavy stuff because my shoulder surgery, so I'll do my best. <laughs> it's all on the side over here. Oops, it's holding all my cutting boards into place. Cutting boards are gonna fall over. Oh, there goes one. Okay, so 
here is my stack. And it just sits on my counter over here. So I have the big uh, 9 by 14 down here. Then I have my 14 inch, 12 inch, 10 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch. I have my square one here. Then my 4, my 2 inch up there, and my lid up here. So I'd love to like find a way to put it on my wall so I could more easily grab it. But um, I don't want it to break down my wall because <laughs> it's so thick and heavy. All right, I'm going to turn this down a little bit now that we've got our boil going really good. Bring it back down more to a simmer while we're just at this last stage of cooking the broccoli. Oh, this smells so good. So one of the reasons that I, I make sure to add salt and pepper at the beginning because I want those flavors incorporated as it cooks, but I don't add all of the salt at the beginning because every cheese has its own like level of saltiness. So depending on if you're adding like a white cheddar or a sharp cheddar or a mild cheddar, or a medium cheddar or whatever you like to use, it's gonna change the end result. So I always wait to add some of the salt till the end so that after I add the cheese and get it all melted and I taste it, I can uh, adjust the level of saltiness. Oh, you guys, this smells and looks amazing. I am ready to add my cheese. Okay. So I turned down my temperature. You don't wanna add the cheese directly to something boiling. So I'm turning it down to low. I'm gonna stir it just a little bit longer until the simmering comes down a tad bit so that I can add the cheese and get it to melt. Now I'm not gonna add all the cheese at once, one, because of my whole pot size issue that we've talked about. Um, and also two, to help it melt easier, we're just gonna do like a cup at a time, melt it, a cup at a time, melt it, a cup at a time, melt it. That is what we're all about. Okay. So I'm gonna add again, whoop, break up my cheese. It's been sitting out a little bit. So about a cup and we're gonna stir it in. Now, one of the things that I missed the most when we lived in Japan was cheese. There was this foreign grocery store that we biked to, it's about eight miles away. We would bike to it about once a month and I got like a little block of cheese about this big for like $15. And that had to last me till the next month when we went again. So I was sparse with my cheese when we lived over there and it was sad. So when we moved back here, one of the very first things that I did was actually to, um, I went to the grocery store and I bought like one of those, like to Costco, I bought one of those big, huge Tillamook cheeses because I'm from Oregon and so I love Tillamook cheese. It's like the only cheese. Um, and I think I ate like half of that block. Those blocks are like three pounds. So I ate like a pound and a half of cheese my first week home. I will say my tummy hurt pretty bad after that. You know how vegetarians who then go stop being vegetarians, they talk about how hard it is for their body to readjust. That was my, that was cheese for me. It was hard for my body to readjust to cheese, which was sad. All right, add another cup. Now I know that some people like to use um, fake cheese for their cheddar broccoli soup, but I am all about the real stuff. The, uh, I do use fake cheese for a couple things, like for some dips and um, for my cheese sauce over broccoli and cauliflower. But for this soup, I'm all about the real cheddar. Oh, we're getting that nice golden color in there now. All right, I'm gonna add the last cup. And like I said, I can tell already that I'm gonna wish I had another two cups of this of cheese grated and ready to go. Oh, so good. A sticky cheese pull. Delicious. Oh, anybody else is totally hungry like me? Okay, the best part is now, as you should always do when cooking, get out my tasting spoon. Oh, my word, why won't my camera change? <laughs> I swear, I've been pushing the button, trying to get the camera changed. I'm gonna get out a tasting spoon to taste it. Now, a tasting spoon is what's when you have a bunch of spoons in your drawer so you can taste it and then throw it in the sink and taste it and throw it in the sink as you're cooking so that you can, you should be always be tasting while you're cooking. Um, for best results. Okay, so grab one of my tasting spoons. In fact, one of the very first food blogs I ever read was one called Tasting Spoons. I loved it, it was amazing. I haven't checked on her in years. I wonder if she's even still around. All right, so let's try a little bit of this. 
Oh my word, my touch screen needs some help. So, perfect bite. Some sauce, some broccoli, onions, and a carrot. Come on, there we go. It's really hot. So I do for my kids. Mm. So good. All right. I am going to add a little bit more salt and pepper, but it's actually really close. This batch of cheese was definitely on the saltier side, so it does not need much. So mm. I'm going to do like about half a teaspoon, maybe, and spread that along the top. Oop, I should let you see that. So I'll finish spreading this. So I can stir it in easier. I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper too. Oh, oh, I just spilled pepper everywhere. And that's gonna make me sneeze. Ooh, try not to sneeze. And then you wanna give this, get stirred in really good. Make sure it's totally incorporated. Get out another tasting spoon and taste it again and adjust from there. And you can do the same thing with all the other spices that you're adding. Um, usually I, if you are going to add other spices, as we talked about, I would add that at the same time that I added the salt and pepper at the beginning. And that was with the flour at the beginning when we were making the roux, the thickener. Um, but it, because those flavors will bloom and they will taste a lot better the longer that you cook them with the soup. Um, salt is one of those ones that reacts immediately though. So it's okay to add here at the end. But if you really feel that something else is missing, add it now. And then make yourself a note that the next time you make the recipe that you needed, that you added more celery at the end, or that you added more cayenne pepper at the end, or whatever it is that you're adding, uh, so that you'll know next time to add that much at the beginning, and you'll be happier at that end result. I am all about taking notes every time I make a recipe so that I don't forget. Um, I slide it out of my sleeve, you write the note on it, and put it right back in the sleeve. So next time I make it, I have that note right there. And when they get covered with too many notes, I reprint it out with all of my adjustments and then I start all over again. I'm always adjusting all of my recipes. All right, another spoon, Make a taste. Perfect, perfect. Mm. All right, so let's give you guys a final shot of this goodness. Like I said, I would probably add another cup of cheese because I'm a cheeseaholic, but this is probably good for the average bear. Um, so good. And you can see how much more liquid it made than you thought it would when we were first stirring in those vegetables. <laughs> Remember how thick it felt and how it didn't seem like there was any liquid at all in there. Now it's a nice, thick, liquidy soups. Again, you can easily adjust this if you want yours to be more soupy by putting in less potatoes and less broccoli. And the one pot worked. I would say this was a resounding success and I only got one pot dirty to clean instead of two. So I'm gonna change the recipe on my site so you guys can go over there and print off this new updated one pot version of this cheddar broccoli soup. And I'm gonna take new pictures too because my old ones are old and I'm gonna be make it prettier because I'm more experienced in food photography now. <laughs> um, anyway, I, that's it. Uh, next week I'll be back on, forget what I'm making. <laughs> I'm making another recipe next Tuesday, 430 mountain time, just like every other week. Um, and I will get that scheduled soon over on YouTube. So you can go hit your notification bell. So if you are watching me for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to my channel or like my Facebook page, whichever platform you're on. Uh, and I will see you next week. I will stay on for a couple of minutes and answer any final questions, but I hope you can see that this one pot soup is comforting. It's thick. It's delicious. It's easy. Um, and it's really not that time consuming. We've been on for how long now? Uh, if I can find it. Uh, we've been on for 48 minutes. And if I wasn't talking and if I was using a bigger pot, so I didn't have to be so careful with stirring, it would have gone even faster. So I would say you could make this soup from the beginning to the end in 45 minutes or less. Um, and that's a really great space of time to have some fresh from scratch dinner on the table for your family. Now tonight is just me and my oldest. And I think we will probably between the two of us eat at least half of this. <laughs> um, 
but that will give me some leftovers for tomorrow as well. So again, thank you for watching. See you next Tuesday and I will stay on and, add, and answer some comments for a little bit. All right, so can you use frozen broccoli? Uh, yes, you can. Is that a lodge cast iron? I do. Uh, I would say 90% of that is lodge cast iron. I love lodge. I have a, a couple other cast iron pieces that people gave me, um, but lodge is the one that I buy when I buy it for myself. This looks like the bomb. Can't wait to make it. Thank you for sharing. You are so welcome, Susie Cakes. Let me know what you think. Uh, hi, hello, Addy girl. Um, thank you for sharing today. You are so welcome, Eve. You just missed it all. Oh, Heather Dawn, I'm so sorry. You were making cheese ravioli with bacon and Brussels sprouts. That sounds good. I mean, not necessarily the Brussels sprouts because vegetables, but bacon and cheese and ravioli. Actually, Brussels sprouts, I think the only way to eat Brussels sprouts is with bacon. So I think you're right on the nose for that one. Does the broccoli stay nice and green or does it get kind of gray? For me, it stays really green. Um, as you can see in this video, right? This is, uh, I mean, the soup's even looking a little bit green, but no, it stays pretty bright and green even the next day when I reheat it. Um, I think if you used frozen broccoli, you might come across that problem. The fresher the broccoli, the greener it's going to stay. Um, but for me, and you can see why I like those small chunks. I like it to, I like it starting to break up and getting those little green speckles. This is when I, this is when I love my soup. So if you prefer your broccoli bigger and more whole, don't cut it up as much. If you're like me and you kind of like that simmering all day, broken down broccoli, then cut it smaller. Like I do when you start, um, it looks so yummy. Wow. That's awesome. Love this soup. Donna, Rita, Margaret. Thank you so much. Joyce. I'm so glad you like it. Zach, you've never tried brie cheese. You want to do a bread fondue with it, but you've never tried brie. Is the flavor similar to? Ooh, uh, I am not the best person to ask that. Um, oh, brie. That's, I mean, it tastes like brie. <laughs> I'm the worst at that. I love all cheeses so much. Um, I, do, I would say just go for it every time. There are very few cheeses that I don't love and they all taste so different. I've had so many cheeses in the last year though. I don't think I've had brie in about six months. Um, it's a stronger flavor, but it's not like cheddar. Uh, somebody help me out here. Somebody has got to have their brain working better than mine right now. Do you have any good recipes using smoked Gouda, one of your favorite cheeses? Honestly, any of my recipes, my mac and cheese, this cheddar broccoli soup, um, you can swap out your cheeses so that you are using the flavor and the taste that you like because cheeses have different softness, different salt levels. Those are the things that I would watch out for. Obviously, Gouda and something like this, it's not going to like it because it's already so soft. Uh, I would do a mixture of cheeses in that case, like with my white mac and cheese. Uh, I love Gruyere, so I use a little Gruyere. I use a little cheddar and I use a little Monterey Jack uh, and I like to mix my cheeses that way. So when I'm using, when I want it into, like if I wanted to make a Gouda mac and cheese, I would still mix it with a couple other stronger, uh, uh, thick, thicker is the wrong word, but just stronger, more robust cheeses to help balance that. But I would go with milder flavored cheeses, like a mild white cheddar or something like that. So the Gouda could still be that stronger flavor but it wouldn't, but the, the softness from the Gouda wouldn't affect the final thickness. Does that make any sense? I feel like I'm just blah rambling. Uh, you're a real cheese girl. Simple, uh, looks fantabulous. How do you get the recipe? Kimberly, there's a link on my site in the Facebook that will take you to it. Currently it is my two pot version of this soup and I'm going to go update it right now. Like in the next 20 minutes, it will be live with a newer version, um, of the recipe. But, mm, give me 30 minutes cause I have to take some pictures first. You love rice and potatoes and noodles. You love to cook and bake. I agree. The Facebook thought, uh, thought in culinary schools, you learned how to make banana bread following a recipe. And of course you follow the recipe and did it with the cheesecake. But until you altered the recipe and make vanilla bread with Greek pudding. I get it, Zach. I do the same thing. Anytime I try a recipe that somebody's like, oh, you should try this. It's so good. Usually I change up the recipe before I even make it. What if it's somebody else's? And then as I make it, I change it up. I, I'm constantly changing up. But this sounds really good with yogurt and cinnamon and walnuts. Sounds amazing. Uh, I'm glad that you're learning it. However, it is. looks yummy. Thank you so much, Becky. Oh no, Becky, what's wrong? You gave me a bunch of angry faces. I don't want angry faces. I'm sorry. You're upset. Um, anyway, I'm done with this recipe. I'll give you a final look at it. I think I've caught up on all of the comments. So creamy, thick cheddar broccoli soup. Again, I like mine on the thicker side. If you don't, you can put in less broccoli. You can leave out the potatoes. Uh, I just like my soup to have a little bit of texture. So that's why I like to use the potatoes and the carrots in with the broccoli. 
So best part about cooking from scratch is you can change it up and personalize it, which is what I like to do with all my recipes. So thanks again for watching. Uh, thank you. I will see you guys next week and uh, have a great week. So I try to turn everything off <laughs> if I can find everything. Uh, Cookie, you're my best friend in your head. <laughs> That's so sweet. You can be my best friend in my head too. Uh, thank you for sharing. Yummy, yeah, missed it all. Okay, all cut up. See you later. Bye.